I remember the night when he went to the hospital. Atzala came to the house and took him on a wheelchair. I still remember actually waving goodbye to him. I remember on Rosh Hashanah, we stayed in Manhattan so that we could visit him. And he was actually able to stand up for a few minutes. And he danced like he was walking around in the circle. So he wanted to sing the song of the year. So he sang that and it was another song. And um, I think that was the last time I saw my father was on Rosh Hashanah passed away on Ches Tishrei Tav Shinun. I remember the Levaya, a lot of parts of the Levaya I remember very clearly. And I remember saying Kaddish for the first time right there in the fresh caver. I shoveled some earth onto the oven. I said Kaddish. The next thing that I could specifically remember is being in 770. The Rebbe gave me a dollar. And um, the Rebbe looked at me. And the Rebbe gave a very, very strong smile, you know? One of those smiles. Like the Rebbe's whole face lit up. And that was it. As soon as we finished saying the last Kaddish, the first night of Sukkot, so... The Rebbe turned to his to the second shtender that they set up for the Rebbe to face the whole crowd. Everyone surged forward, so we basically got pushed. All of a sudden, we noticed a little small path from the Rebbe's bim, from the steps to the Rebbe's bim to where I was standing. I didn't see the exchange because I was behind all the tall people. But the Rebbe basically wanted us to come. So we, we walked and we were just like told to stand right next to the Rebbe's shtender. The whole crowd was singing the Samachtan. And it was a very loud singing. We came close mamish to the Rebbe's feet. And, uh, and the Rebbe looked at us. The Rebbe gave us a, a strong encouragement. And uh, at that point, like in one second, that's when everything changed. The, the Rebbe is taking me in. I, I, I'm with the Rebbe. And then the Rebbe walked to the steps to go down. The Rebbe turned around, and the Rebbe gave another, you know, encouragement. And then I went upstairs. And that's it. From then, we were always near the Rebbe. <laughs> It, it was that moment. The Rebbe just like took us in, suddenly like we were, we were there from the evening from the beginning to end. We were Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Hakafis. You're there for hours. The Rebbe for bring for a long time. The Rebbe has a very hard schedule, especially on Yom Tif. We were there. The Rebbe was moided us. The Rebbe was encouraging the singing to us. The, the Rebbe was infusing us with simcha. Pashat simcha. One of the most constant interactions the Rebbe had with us was the Rebbe showing us to say Amen Yehei Shmei Rabba. The Rebbe would uh, many times, in an, in a, sometimes in an, in an exaggerated form, the Rebbe would like mouth the words Amen 
Amen Yehish Mein Rabba. And we haven't made it so clear to us that it's very important that we should say Amen Yehish Mein Rabba. It became like a, a Zahirt Fei by us to always say Amin Yehish Mein Rabba very loud because that's what the Rabba is teaching us. Until this very day, answering Amin Yehish Mein Rabba is such an important thing for me because this is something that the Rebbe himself taught me so many times. The Rebbe taught things that really a father is meant to teach. We were sitting alone in Shul. No one's telling us what to do, no one's telling us to be quiet, no one's telling us now it's time to answer Amin. So the Rebbe himself took, the, took this initiative and the Rebbe you know, taught us these things. I remember a very, uh, like a very sweet and warm memory. My younger brother, Shalomke, he's three years younger than me, a little over three years. He was mamish very young. So I was like always like taking care of him, so to speak, for in those years. And like by in 770, I would show him where to dive in, I would talk with him, I would like... Um, so I remember they once took out the Torah on Shabbos, before Kriya Satera, they took out a Tera and the Chazan started saying, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elekeinu Hashem Echad. We had one Siddur, we were sharing a Siddur and I was pointing with Shalomke, my younger brother, I was showing him how to respond. I was pointing, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elekeinu Hashem Echad. And then, and then the Chazan says, God will Hashem Iti, and I, I, he finished and I looked up and I, I had this memory of that, but like, just like looking at us so... It was like staring at us. That was like watching this whole episode. I wasn't aware of it before, it like as it was happening. But I looked up and I see the Rebbe was looking. There was so much love in the Rebbe's eyes, so much um, nachas. The Rebbe was so like um, approving of it, so like um, um, attached to what just happened. It was a Sunday after school, towards evening. The Rebbe is towards the end of giving out dollars. And we weren't gonna go for dollars, but me and my brother, Shmuel Chaim, decided we we're, go, were gonna go get a dollar. And my mother said, fine. My mother wasn't going to get a dollar. She waited outside with my sister and my youngest brother, with Shalom. Oh, so Shmuel Chaim gets a dollar, the Rebbe gives me a dollar. I start walking away and the Rebbe calls me back. And the Rebbe asks, um, in English the Rebbe asked me, where is your sister? Where is your sister? As I was starting to tell the Rebbe and I was trying to figure out how exactly am I going to talk to the Rebbe. So I, turned, I was turning around, you know, and for whatever reason, my mother, my sister, and my brother decided to come get a dollar, and they were coming in from that, from the door on the other side. So I just, oh, they're there. The message I took from that is that I have to, that I, that, that I have to be mindful of my sister. She didn't have a father, so sometimes, you know, she needed, I guess, a, a, a brother to look after her. Shalom Ke turned three, Yudal Tchesh Tov Shinun. So my mother wanted very much that the Rebbe should do the first cut. So we, we went by dollars, and my mother was holding um, my brother, Shalom Ke, and she had scissors prepared. And she pulled out her scissors, and the Rebbe, the Rebbe turned to label, and, and label pr pulled out a thing of scissors, and the Rebbe used his scissors. We were like drowned in the, in the idea that the Rebbe already had scissors prepared. The Rebbe obviously knew about the option. The Rebbe thought about it before. The Rebbe ensured that he wants to, not that we're, we, we are requesting, he wants to um, um, cut the hair of Shalomke. That was 
That was the Rebbe like uh, schlepping us in. And it was like these kinds of things that gave us like the, that message, you know, I'm involved, I'm, 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 I'm in tune with your family, I notice you're here, you're not here, like, I'm happy that you're here. The Rebbe provided us with emotional health, uh, emotional state of mind, a feeling of validation, a feeling of belonging, a feeling that, that, uh, that, that every human being should feel. That we might have not have not have had another source how to get it. When a person is in um, in the rut, the Rebbe picks you up. The Rebbe is looking at you, and the Rebbe is paying attention to you, and the Rebbe is finding a way to lift you up and elevate you. Happy birthday! Happy birthday!